Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of Sergeant Major Jim Campson and myself, I want to thank you for another outstanding safe year in the aviation community. Safety is very important to us, and because of that, we are conducting a safety stand down day. Why do we conduct a safety stand down day? Well, we have to by regulation, but more importantly, we have to because we identify our deficiencies and learn from our deficiencies and go forward from there. The results of our safety and our safety day are phenomenal. Worldwide and domestic missions uh, without a fatality or significant at fault accident. Truly a remarkable uh, mark considering the scope and breadth of the 34th CAB missions. We not only supported Afghanistan with Medevac, our, both of our companies, but also in closing down Iraq with our Chinook company. While that was going on, we conducted no less than three state active duty missions uh, in, in support of the Adjutant General and the Governor. These tremendous results are no accident. It is due to the dedication and professionalism of the soldiers within this community. We are here to bring the focus to prevention. We want to eliminate preventable accidents because prevention saves lives and equipment. To review our results, our accidents and our lessons learned, we want to learn from our mistakes and from the mistakes of others. And we want to incorporate our lessons learned into our culture. Remember that behavioral changes lead strong safety programs. I ask you that leaders at all levels need to be involved in safety. Strong organizations incorporate safety and loss prevention in all operations. Risk management. Remember that there are no new accidents, just new victims. Almost everything has already happened. The same causes are at the root of most accidents. Complacency, inattention, and a false sense of urgency. If you use composite risk management, the five-step process, identify the hazards, assess the hazards, develop controls, implement controls, supervise and evaluate, you will reduce the overall risk. It will also help us in finding and addressing obvious and hidden hazards. I ask you to use both at drill and also at home. I want to cover a few things that we've done successful for FY12 and to focus on 13 and beyond. To start with, the year started with the deployment and redeployment of our Chinooks from Kuwait and Iraq. Followed by our deployment and redeployment of 171, the Medevac detachment to Afghanistan. On its heels, we trained Charlie Company 2 to 11th Medevac for their deployment and then their deployment in July. And then after that, we transitioned right into receiving A Company 2 to 147 back to our fold. All very successful missions. If that was just the year, it would be a very successful year. However, we've done several other things. Some of them are the transition to the CH 47Fs for B Company, as well as the 34th Cab and the Warfighter preparation and their seminars. We've also closed down Iraq and the drawing down of Afghanistan. For FY13 and beyond, very similar in years past to post-Vietnam, the first Iraq war, and every post-conflict drawdown since then. Our mission, no change for the National Guard aviation. We still are planning on two caps per year within the fight.
close to home, the 34th cab. We are going into our training year three, which is culminating with our warfighter exercise next summer. We, are, we have been identified as a contingency expeditionary force, which our focus will be on homeland defense, civil support, overseas exercises, and any global response that we are called upon. Let me talk a little bit about the budget for next year. We have a strong year ahead of us. All signs point to a strong year in flying for this entire organization. However, having said that, the word sequestration is still out there. If this happens, no doubt we will change our plans and everybody will be identified. The 34th cab demographics are shifting. We have a lot of soldiers retiring. We're losing our experience. We have new air crew members. Any one given month, we have 12 to 15 students at Fort Rucker going through flight school. We have new airframes on the horizon, like the CH-47F that we'll receive this month, as well as uh, additional Ada Ls and Mike model U-860s in the near future. We also have new missions, such as Central and South America. I want to change the subject and talk about suicide. I want to talk to you that suicide is still a concern and a problem for us in the Minnesota National Guard. I want to say that we've been in your shoes. I feel your pain. I've lived it with my family personally. If you're having problems, especially during this holiday season, I want you to know that we care about you, that there's organizations within our organization that can help you, whether it's financial or whether it's personal or relationships. The bottom line is we care about you and we want to help you. This is a huge family that we're in, and I think it's important that we all know that we have our next line leaders' phone numbers in there, some of our friends' phone numbers in there. If you ever get in a place where you feel you can't get out, always remember there is help. Most of the people know a way to get a hold of me, and I think most of the people know between me and the Colonel, we both care for everybody in this organization, and we'll do anything we can to help. So please, before we ever get to that step, make sure we make the phone call. And always remember that the, the acronym ACE, ask the soldier if they're thinking about hurting themselves. Care for them enough and make sure we escort them to a proper care facility so they can get taken care of immediately. So where do we go from here? Our next step to ensure that the next year is as safe as this last. Leaders need to enforce the standards. We need to make sure that we do the by-the-book operations and follow established procedures, all SOPs and regulations. We need to demand consistency and focus. This is a dangerous business that we're in, and we remember that the consequences of failure can be catastrophic. Do the right thing, right thing even when people are not looking. This also includes having battle buddies and enforcing those standards. What we need to do is we need to be smart about these things. We need, need to know what the hazards are and how to address them. We can do that either professionally and personally. We need to know how to do that. Do not drink and drive. If you do decide to drink, don't drive. Have a plan. Talk to somebody. I'm sure you have somebody's phone number that you can call. Take a minute to think about these things. We need to make sure that we're aware of the sense of urgency. There is nothing that important that we can't slow down, take our time, and make sure it's done safe. We need to focus on the job at hand and maintain situ situational awareness at all times. This will stop the loss. In conclusion, this is a new era and requires a new focus. I need you to be proactive in safety and in your careers. I need you to leverage your experiences and improve with innovation. We have a bright future. We have a long-term commitment in Minnesota for the aviation community. 
we are going to modernize and we have opportunities in the near future. Finally, remember, we are all in this together. Please be safe. Thank you.